Welcome to another video from the Fisherman's Net and Saints Peter and Paul in Naperville, Illinois. It's the beginning of November, and at this time every year, the church kind of lays out for us two days in the liturgical calendar that kind of remind us that the church is bigger than we might usually think. Here's what I mean. For most of us, I think our conception of the church can first of all be limited just to our parish. So I belong to, say, St. Peter and Paul Church, or I belong to St. Raphael's Church, or St. Thomas Church. Well, of course, our church is bigger than that. As Catholics, well, the next uh, idea would be, well, we're united as the Church of the Diocese of Joliet here, uh, around our bishop, Bishop Daniel Conlin. But, of course, the church is even larger than that. We have a universal Catholic church uh, of 1.1 of billion members spread throughout the world, uh, united in um, the Holy Father, the Pope, the Bishop of Rome. But even that doesn't give us the full picture of the church. See, that's what we call the church militant. The church militant is those of us here still on earth, still fighting against sin, still in our struggle, on our journey, our pilgrimage to our heavenly homeland. But that church militant, we here on earth, that's only one third uh, or one of three parts of the church. And these two celebrations at the beginning of November remind us of those other members of the church. So first of all, we have on November 1st, we celebrated All Saints Day. Now, throughout the calendar year, throughout the liturgical year, we celebrate various canonized saints on certain days. But this is a day, November 1st, where we celebrate all the saints. That is, all of those, whether they be canonized saints or forgotten to history, all of those people who are now in the presence of God. And we call this the Church Triumphant. The Church Triumphant are the, the saints in heaven. All of those who have struggled like us, but have now uh, arrived in the, the presence of God and who are worshiping him in heaven. So this church triumphant uh, is uh, an important element for us Catholics to understand that, first of all, they're not disinterested in our continuing struggle. Uh, the scriptures picture those in heaven uh, kind of cheering us on. If you look at like, um, Hebrews chapter 12, it kind of talks about the, those in heaven as a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us as we're still on our journey towards heaven. So we also see the church triumphant as those who are interceding on our behalf, those who are praying for us since they're at the throne of God, they're in God's presence, and they're still intimately concerned with us they'd be interceding for us, praying on our behalf to the Father uh, for our ultimate salvation. And so uh, uh, another part of that is that we can pray to those saints and ask for their intercession. So All Saints reminds us, first of all, of uh, not simply the canonized saints, but that all who are in heaven, whether we know their names or not, uh, we're united to them. And that these saints are our uh, role models in the faith to, um, to imitate as they imitated Christ, but also to ask for their intercession. There's a relationship there between us, the church militant, and those in heaven, the church triumphant. And then on November 2nd, the church reminds us of the third part of the church. On November 2nd, we celebrate all souls, or uh, we remember all the souls of the faithfully departed. And particularly on this day, on November 2nd, we turn our prayers uh, to God for them. And this would be what's called the church suffering. Um, this, is, this would be the souls in purgatory. Those Christians who have left this life in the friendship of God, but are as yet not fully purified. And so before they enter God's holy presence, they're going to be purified from uh, every inkling, every stain of sin that they're going to enter into God's presence completely pure and holy. And so those who leave this life needing that purification, we understand uh, that there's this state called purgatory, where that remaining attachment to sin is purged and purified. Well, we believe that just as those in heaven can intercede on our behalf, 
so we can intercede for those who are undergoing that purification in purgatory. Um, that our prayers, especially the Mass, truly does benefit these souls. That between all three of these parts of the Church, the Church triumphant, the Church militant, and the Church suffering, that there is a communion, that there's a relationship of spiritual goods, that we can pray for one another um, and act on one another's behalf before the Father. This communion we call the communion of saints. We're part of this communion of saints. Uh, you don't have to wait to get to heaven to be part of the communion of saints. The communion of saints is the church triumphant in heaven, the church militant here on earth, and the church suffering, being purified in purgatory, the communion of those three, of all the members of the church, uh, and this exchange of spiritual goods and prayers. So the church gives us these two days, November 1st, all saints, November 2nd, all souls, gives us these two dates to remind us of this, but this should be something we carry with us throughout the year. Uh, just as the church gives us other great feasts to remind us of things, that we should carry out through the year, uh, the Church does so with these two. And so even though we celebrate All Saints and All Souls, particularly at the beginning of November, it's a reminder throughout the different days of the year to call on the intercession of the saints, to imitate their example, um, and also to pray for those who are deceased, to pray um, that those who died in the friendship of God would be hastened on their way into his presence. So these are two great feast days in the church uh, at the beginning of November, but they shouldn't remain in the beginning of November. They should be incorporated into our spirituality every day.